Snowden and Huang are trying to build a warning system for your phone's radio, DMCA is under fire by the EFF, and the DNC was hacked. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I'm Shannon Morse and this is ThreatWire for July 26, 2016. Your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. If you haven't checked out our Patreon yet, please do so. We have lots that we want to do for the show, but we can't do it without your support. Patreon.com slash ThreatWire is the place to support ThreatWire, and the link is in the show notes. Now, one of the longest running problems in recent history with privacy is, well, cell phone interception, and how a state-affiliated attacker could easily use your smartphone against you. To combat this, Edward Snowden, who is very famous for his leaks of the NSA's PRISM documents along with others, is working with hardware hacker Andrew Bunny Huang to design a device for iPhones that would monitor electrical signals going to the phone's antenna. This would be able to check if a phone's radios were transmitting, get this, even if you put it in airplane mode or in a signal blocking case, which may or may not work like it should. A privacy device such as this could be used to protect journalists in dangerous areas, protesters, and more. Now, the device looks kind of like a battery case, but it uses the SIM card slot to wire straight into the iPhone's internals and then track the radios. It would signal the user with an audible alarm or a message on the built-in screen if a radio is turned on when it shouldn't be. Now, by doing this, a journalist could still document the action on their phone through the camera or through audio, but they wouldn't have to have their radio on, which would thereby give away their location. Yeah, let's just keep the locations secret. Now, while the idea has been tested by Snowden and Huang, they have not built a prototype yet. They do want to get this idea on the ground running within the next year, and the parts are very common in China. Now, funding may be made through the Freedom of the Press Foundation, though nothing is set in stone yet with regards to manufacturing and supply. Their entire research paper can be read in the link in the show notes. Under Section 1201 of the Digital Millennium Copyright Act in the U.S., which was created in 1998, yeah, it's a little old. It states, quote, no person shall circumvent a technological measure that effectively controls access to a work protected under this title. Now, these technological protection measures, or TPMs, include descrambling a scrambled work, decrypting encrypted work, as well as avoiding, bypassing, removing, deactivating, or impairing the technological measure without authority of the copyright owner. Now, according to an EFF lawsuit filed against the U.S., this works against security researchers' free speech and ability to get their work done because it's basically restricting reverse engineering technology. It's not uncommon for a security researcher to reverse engineer code used in popular technology to find any kind of security holes, which by and far is really good for citizens, only to be held under fire by the company with the threat of lawsuits. The EFF hopes to change this by giving security researchers the ability to work on technological devices without the threat of lawsuits over their heads. Over the weekend, about 20,000 emails were leaked to WikiLeaks from internal DNC communications. This happens just as the DNC, which is short for the Democratic National Committee, is holding their 2016 convention in Philadelphia from July 25th through 28th. Now, within these emails are ones from a consultant named Alexandra Chalupa, who saw warnings via her get this private Yahoo email account stating that her account was likely targeted by state-sponsored actors. Chalupa was working on opposition research against the Trump campaign chairman Paul Manafort at the time. Chalupa's emails were the first discovered to pertain to private email accounts and devices, and after an investigation of the DNC's network by security firm CrowdStrike, the DNC believes it to be the work of Russian state-sponsored hackers. Russian involvement is unconfirmed at this time. Now, thanks again to all the fine people who contribute to patreon.com slash threatwire. You brought this show back to life, and you are the reason that we can keep bringing you news every single week. Any little bit helps us grow the show, and in return, we are going to build an RSS for you, and when we reach our next goal, we will bring on another episode every single week. We might even feature your adorable fur babies in an upcoming episode, because they really are adorable. They're so cute. They're kind of like Pokemon. 
Check out the perk levels on Patreon, and thanks again for helping us keep this coming completely independent and ad-free. And of course, if you cannot donate, that's totally cool too. You can hit the subscribe button, or you can share this episode on your favorite social media page. And use the hashtag ThreatWire so that we can see it, and then we'll retweet you because you guys are awesome. And with that, I am Shannon Morse, and I will see you on the internet. Thank <laughs> you.